I'm Ben Paul, I work for OPST, and right now I'm going to tie a composite bait fish pattern. Um, it's kind of a complex mix of colors, which I think is, is pretty fun. It's all going to be, it's just going to be a tail and then one whole composite loop for the body. So it's pretty easy, um, and it's I think it's something that a lot of fish haven't seen before, so check it out. First thing I'm going to do is use a size 4 saltwater hook. Um, I've tied these things all the way down to like you know an inch, inch and a half long and they work really well but just to illustrate it I'm gonna tie sort of a standard size 4. The tail is going to be well first of all the thread I'm gonna use 6 aught mono thread and hopefully the spool doesn't give me too much trouble. It's been around for a little while. Just secure the thread on to the towards the back nice thing about mono thread is it's strong and it also is see-through so if you're using a you know epoxy at the head of the fly it, it's nice because you, you get all the colors layered on your fly. But for the tail I'm going to use OPST small dotted ostrich. This is on sale now until it runs out. Might have already run out by the time you see this but we have our new ostrich has bigger dots otherwise it's the same. So I'm going to make a nice long tail, um, sort of measure it out on my fly here, how we want it to look. That's about about right, maybe a dozen a dozen fibers. You can cut them. It's better to err on the side of them more. You can trim them off later. And just make them as long as we feel like. I think that's going to be about right because the composite loop materials are going to sort of flow back and we don't want them to be longer than the tail so we want to make our tail relatively long. And I'm going to cut just short of the eye, make a few loose wraps over it and now this is going to be the point where we start our composite loop. I'm going to lay down a bed of pearl ice dub. This is going to be the base layer, sort of the bread of our sandwich here, and it's got pretty nice long fibers. Some of these are going to be too long, longer than the tail, so we can sort of even them out, which I didn't do a good job of there. And I could break these if I wanted to, um, and I think I'm going to because they're pretty long. It's a nice thing about ice dub, you can just break the fibers without distorting them, and then lay it all down. This fly is not going to be super exact. Um, there's going to be a lot of variance as far as length and the, and the dubbing, but that's okay because there's a lot of um, room for error and you know it's, you can still make a somewhat quite a natural taper. So I'm going to lay down about mm, it's probably going to take three inches because I've got quite a bit of space on the hook to take up. I'm just break them. These things tend to stick to your fingers. And I'm just kind of laying them down. You know it's not that precise but you'll see it. it. It should look okay. So now we've got I'm gonna put some lavender in here. Some lavender bait fish emulator flash just for a little bit of uh, pearlescent you know color contrast. Just, just trying it out. This thing comes on a string here and you can just cut them to the length you want. And be mindful here, up top this is, represents the back of the fly. You want to make the fibers, if you're being careful, you want to make them a little longer up here than you, than you want them up front. So they should be shorter up here, at, down here at the bottom, you know, back to front. Take about a three quarters of an inch section. These are about two inches long. And just lay them, I'm not going to lay them really thick, I'm going to use a light application and I think I'm going to lay the rest aside, that's about all I need. I could put pearl too, uh, I was going to, I think I'm going to have enough body as it is. Uh, this is another, this is a really good material that I often use. 
And I'm going to stick with the lavender because we got a lot of white and a lot of pearl going on already. I am going to use some blue ice dub, some light blue. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle this just so that you get the impression of blue. You know, if you look at a, a bait fish, they look different from every angle, and just about every fish has some really complex iridescence, and that's what we're trying to get at. With this blue and just kind of lay it on. Damp it down with your finger. And for the second half of my sandwich, I'm going to use a light gray UV ice tub. And again, that's just another, that's one more color. So this whole giant mess, we're going to put in a composite loop. So I'm going to make a dubbing loop. I'm going to make it a little bit longer than that line of materials there. Wax it. And I'm going to just take the whole thing and put it in there. Open wide. You can see it's got all kinds of colors. Just put it in there. Right in the middle. And get our OPSC dubbing spinner here. Really, really nice tool. It's very heavy, it just spins forever. We're just gonna spin that. I'm gonna spin it again. That should be good to go. That mono thread bites really well. Now that we've spun it, we'll pick it out. Gonna lose some ice dub this way, that's okay. We got some despair in there. We want the fibers to really stand up and actually be part of the fly. We don't want them to just be trapped. So now we're looking at a pretty decent looking brush. And if I were gonna do more of these flies, which I might, I can just set this aside and save it. Can save yourself a lot of material this way. Now I'm gonna brush it. Especially that blue part. I got some blue that's trapped in there. I want to get that out. Next thing I'm gonna do is wet it. Part it, squeeze, wet, and create a hackle. This will help you. We have got all kinds of space here, but if you have only a little, little bit of space, it's even more important. It compacts the materials and lets you put them in a small space. Now, with these fibers being so long, we don't necessarily have to make the wraps right up against each other. We can leave a bunch of space and you won't notice, so we'll see what how this one looks here. And if you want a fat headed minnow, you want to make more wraps towards the head. If you want it to be even, wrap them evenly. Looks like I even have a little bit of excess. Cut off a loop. Now what I used to do here is epoxy some eyes. Or maybe I would have put dumbbell eyes on, but what I've been doing recently is using um, fish masks. This is a really awesome 
uh, addition to a bait fish fly. No matter how sloppy a fly may look up front, you slip one of these on and it looks amazing. You just have to super glue it in or use, I'm gonna use uh, some UV, lemon UV glue. That's our fly, that's pretty much the effect I was going for. It's, you know, it's hard to say exactly what color it is. It's mostly it's sort of a bluish, whitish, you know, lavender, and you can't really see the tail right now because it's wet, but I'm gonna whip finish this and then I'm gonna put that fish mask on and it will be done. So the mask just slips on right over the top after the fact. If you just make sure beforehand that it'll fit over the hook point, the uh, the hook, and then we have you know a pretty pretty neat looking head that we can put we can put any number of, of eyes on here. I'll use some UV um, <clears throat> fly finish here along with a UV light and get this get these eyes put on. Put them in there and again I'm gonna have to secure the actual head on but 15 seconds. Yep. <clears throat> They're on there. So now I'm gonna do it again with the head itself and just put some. Actually, you know what? I'm not, because the fly's still wet. But <clears throat> you can imagine, I'll just put glue on, on the head there and it'll be good to go. And that I'm you know I'm pretty pretty pleased with that. The the longest um, fibers in the loop come to about here, which is just short of the tail, so that's about how I wanted it. Um, you can mess around with the lengths, um, but the important thing is that it, the fly moves well and, and you know has a a nice taper. This has has a pretty slim little teardrop shape, and you know I think that's gonna that's the fly I was going for. So play around with this. You know you can for everything from from little guys to up to big uh, you know pike and musky flies can you can really have a lot of fun with this technique and make a unique effect and I think it's it's a lot easier than tying in multiple stations of materials as I, I like doing it in just one thing one loop and getting it over with so hope you have fun playing around with that